Hello, hello. My name is Callista, and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. In the last episode, we completed Here Lies the Abyss, and Hawk was sadly left behind in the Fade. She is presumed dead. I, like I was saying at the end of the last episode, I do kind of hope that she stays dead because that's how I always imagined Amelia's story. But, you know, considering the character development there, I, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing her make a comeback in Dragon Age 4 and seeing what she gets up to there. Maybe, maybe, but only if it's played well. Now then, now that we're back here, um, I'm inclined to go to the, um, the war table first. Hello there, guy with the no name. Harrit made. Should I wait for his reply? That is at his discretion. I have nothing further to add. Of, of course. You may depart in a moment. I do believe I have something for you. Yeah, there we go. I'll be back to talk to you in a bit, my dear. And up and over. Yeah, let's let's sort out the war table first. Me thinks. And then we. Oh, hello. You're right. Messages are sent. As you asked. Oh, okay. Fair dues. All right. No gossip there, it seems. But yeah, once we've sorted out the war table, we're gonna go and have another round of uh, of companion chats because certain people are gonna have things to say. You know it. Ooh. It's time to plan our next attack. What's the state of the Inquisition? Our alliance with Orle holds, for the present. They'll send aid on request. And your actions at Adamant denied Corypheus his army of pet demons. With Orle's support, our numbers match his. Corypheus' followers must be panicking. My agents agree. Our victories have shaken his disciples. Hmm. Let's hope for deserters. I'm sure they are. They'll be easier. To... Yeah, let's, let's hope people leave and just head home. Perhaps they'll rethink following the Darkspawn Magister from the dawn of time. Where is Corypheus now? After Adamant, Corypheus uprooted his major strongholds and sent them marching south to the Arbor Wilds. His army clearly wasn't prepared to flee. Our victories have them on the defensive. Hmm. We'll keep them there. They'll be hard to miss. It's time to finish them off. Um, yeah, let's... I, this seems very boastful. Um, I, I don't picture Ainor as particularly boastful, so yeah, let's... Let's just hope we can keep up with this spate of victories. They've terrorized Thedas long enough. We end them now. If Corypheus is hiding in the Arbor Wilds, that's where we'll go. But what is Corypheus doing in such a remote area? His people have been ransacking Elven ruins since Haven. We believe he seeks more. What he hopes to find, however, continues to elude us. Which should surprise no one. Fortunately, I can assist. Uh, well, if you have some knowledge that would help us out, then please go ahead. You have my attention, Lady Morrigan. What Corypheus seeks in those Forgotten Woods is as ancient as it is dangerous. Which is? His best, if I show you. This is an Illuvian, an elven artifact from a time long before their empire was lost to human greed. I restored this one at great cost, but another lies within the Arbor Wilds. That is what Corypheus seeks. Hmm, <laughs> an elven artifact, yes. Uh, it's beautiful. How did you do this? You brought it here. Um. Yeah, these were the mirrors we kept seeing shattered in the Fade. Very interesting. Also, Illuvian, this this was the item from the uh, Dalish origin story in Dragon Age Origins that, uh, you know, Tamlin was touching and it it tainted him and potentially dragged him through to, to God knows where, the Deep Roads, probably. Um, I, I do think that Ionor would be very intrigued by this. You know, I... It's doubtful that she's ever seen 
one of these things before. It, she definitely hasn't seen one active. So yeah, I think she would be very intrigued. This belonged to my people. I found legends of an elven temple within the Arbor Wilds. Untouched. It proved too dangerous to approach, and thus I turned elsewhere to find my prize. If Corypheus has turned southward, he could succeed where I failed. The Illuvian would be his. What does it do? A more appropriate question would be, where does it lead? If this place once had a name, it has long been lost. I call it the Crossroads, a place where all Illuvians join, wherever they might be. So I just want to say somewhere in this area i i don't know if you can see it but if you have fly cam then you can find it meryl's alluvian is here which i think is a very a very nice touch are we in danger it's incredible this could be useful oh i i, I do think part of ionor is thinking like what's here like are, are there monsters here are there enemies like whatever but i to be honest, I think she'd just be so shocked at seeing elven magic working. I've I've mentioned this before. Ionor Ionor tends to look to the future rather than looking to the past. She doesn't she doesn't want to get rid of elven history or out like that, but she's she's just very protective of her people both Dalish and City Elves alike, and her, her thinking is that, you know, some things are best left forgotten because they are potentially dangerous. Some things are in dangerous locations. It is no point risking yourselves to try and find something when you could be working towards a better, brighter future. Why should we obsess over the past when we could build a future that would make the ancient elves envious. Why was that time so great? Why can't we build something new? But it, despite that, I think she would be genuinely shocked at seeing an elven artifact, not only working, but something powerful. This thing teleported her to an entirely separate location in like an instant. This, I imagine her clan probably has delved into some ruins. Um. Not any particularly dangerous ones, you know, it was probably ruins that, you know, other clans had already gone into and cleared out. Or, you know, maybe they only had like a, a few spiders, maybe some wolves, you know, things that the hunters could easily take out. And, you know, whatever artifacts they found were probably probably bits like bro broken pottery, stone slabs, things like that. Nothing magical, nothing that worked. So I, I do think she would, like... It, clearly she's not standing with her mouth agape, but like she she's having to think like don't look like a goldfish, iron or close your mouth, keep your jaw closed. I, I think she would be astounded. This place is extraordinary. How could this even exist? Who can say? Formed from the fabric of time and space, perhaps. The ancient elves left no roads, only ruins hidden in far flung corners. This is how they travelled between them. As you can see, most of the mirrors are dark, broken, corrupted, or unusable. As for the rest, a few can be opened from this side, but only a few. Mm. 
How on earth did you find this, Morrigan? How did you find out about this place? My travels have led me to many strange destinations, Inquisitor. Once, they led me here. It offered sanctuary. Sanctuary? Not all the mirrors lead back to our world. The ancients were nothing if not resourceful. <laughs> yeah, what, what does that mean? If they'd only back to our world, then... Places between, like this one. I can describe it no better. For a time, I had a safe place to raise my son. But only for a time. One cannot remain in between forever. Mm. What do you mean, a few can be opened from this side? Some of the Illuvians have been left unlocked, like doors accidentally left ajar. All others are closed. They can be opened only from beyond. Opened how? With a key. And you have a key? I suppose you have such a key. The key can be many things. Each Illuvian is different. I have knowledge as well as power. Often that is enough. Hmm. Corypheus wants this, I don't understand. Are these useful at all? A, they, who cares if they're useful, they're impressive. Corypheus wants to come here. This is not the Fade, but it is very close. Someone with enough power could tear down the ancient barriers. And enter the Fade in the flesh, like Corypheus wanted to do with the Anchor. He learned of the Alluvian in the Arbor Wilds as I did. He marshals the last of his forces to reach it. You have made Corypheus desperate, Inquisitor. We must work together to stop him, and soon. And there it be, just standing there. Oh, I... I, I think Ainul would be in shock. To be honest, I, I think she'd just be very... Maybe shock isn't the right word. Speechless. I think that's better. I think she'd just be amazed that, you know, it's this there. For Cabot. I'd appreciate if it was first on your rams. It's out of the way. Yes, and I would appreciate if it were first, but it's out of the way. There will be extra compensation for you, as you wish. <laughs> I love it, but it's out of the way. I'll pay extra. Done. Fair. Fair. <laughs> but yeah, as, as I was saying, I, I think she'd just be so, so gobsmacked. That, that that's there, that it works. You you know that she's writing back to her keeper about that. Like, I've seen this amazing thing. You'd be so interested in it. You know, if you ever come to Skyhold, like, I've got to show it you. Like, holy shit. You'd think it was so cool. Hello, Segret. Pardon me. Now, if I may, I would really rather like to... Oh, Hello. Yeah, I would really rather like to deal with the war table. Again, no gossip there. No gossip with Josephine. Now then, war table. No cutscene, please. That's the only time I'm gonna say that. <laughs> okay, hey, Morgan's joining us from now on. Sweet. Now then, where were people at? Okay, they were all on this side. An offer of help on their terms. Our soldiers report that they passed through the tunnel without incident and surprised a sizable Venatorian encampment. After the battle, they had to find a different route back because the tunnel had been collapsed. They found this letter, Liliana. A letter on dark vellum with obviously dwarven markings. You follow instructions well. Respect of our territory is a first step. 
We shall see. Vinthus Warhelm Halsharok. Excellent. Fabulous. And deal with the angry Vargas. It's done. The roads are safe. Haven't seen a Vargas in some time. Griffinwing will keep growing. Rylan. And negotiate a deal for the weapon plans. I was unable to reach a compromise with the Tavinta. I suppose our influence does stretch only so far. He did, however, offer his apologies and made us a gift of some rare materials. I will keep our negotiations open, but it does not look promising. Josephine, <laughs> and we received nothing for that. Yeah, that's that's fair. If we had sided with Liliana and chosen to um have the Tavinta either killed or blackmailed, we probably would have gotten those schematics, but I, I don't think Ainor could have signed off on that. Alrighty then, let me just figure out where I'm sending everyone. Be right back. Okie doke, and I'm back. I've decided to stick on the Orlesian side of the map. First things first, protect Valgamord from Darkspawn. My apologies about that. Where was I? Uh, your worship. My town of Valgamord has been besieged by Darkspawn. I cannot fathom where the loathsome beasts have come from, but I beg the Inquisition for assistance. My own humble forces have already been dispatched to help in your own noble efforts, leaving my people ill-equipped against this savage host. Word of your redemption of the Grey Wardens has already spread far. Please, if you can spare them, Valgamord lives or dies by your word. Yours, Marquis Ephiloch Buffon? I don't know how to pronounce that name. Uh, Josephine suggests Marquis uh, Ethelok has other allies. She can call upon them and we can save the wardens for a true emergency. Liliana says, It is odd to see a town threatened by Darkspawn. I suggest we investigate before committing forces. And Cullen says, The Grey Wardens are in, are in the best... What? I think that's an extra in there. The Grey Wardens are the best in the world against Darkspawn. This is their chance to shine. And yeah... If, if this town is being besieged by Darkspawn, I, I don't know where Valgamord is. Maybe Ionor does, but I know Liliana is saying that it's odd, but if, if they're in the mountains, then perhaps they are close to a, to a deep roads entrance, and that's where they're coming from. We, we saved the Grey Wardens so that they could continue to fight against Darkspawn. This is their business, so... To work? Good stuff. Next up, unmask those across the sea. I had our people remove the downward pointing triangular symbols from our outposts. They have not made a reappearance, which means little. It's clear someone has an interest in the Inquisition. Someone organized with ties to those across the sea. We've eliminated the, we've eliminated the Kunari as the most obvious suspects. Nonetheless, knowing who they're not does not tell us who they are what they're doing, or why. They're clever, we know that, and they have resources. But so do we, and they should learn that they are not to toy with the Inquisition. Liliana. Colin would have suggested, this is pointless. I won't commit our forces to hunting a shadowy cabal obsessed with little chalk drawings. I say we forget this and focus on Corypheus. And Liliana says, if our investigations have any hope of succeeding, we'll have to strike hard and fast before they even know we're looking. A coordinated effort, hitting all the leads we have at once. And Josephine is not participating. And um, I think this this hasn't um, come up in a while. At the beginning of the game, basically we were finding these little chalk drawings on all our outposts. And... Um, so we created a, a fake outpost, I believe. We watched a, uh, a, kind of like a beggar woman come up. She made a bit of like small chit chat with the guards and then she drew the sign. And when we questioned her, she kissed uh, a locket, was like, oh, I give my life to those across the sea. And then she died, the locket was poisoned. And ever since then, we've been trying to find out, you know, who's watching us, why. Um, I mean, if Liliana has forces to spare, and, you know, she clearly feels strongly about this. It is weird. It is really weird that this this organization is watching us. It would be good to know who and why. So, yeah, I... Like, Cullen has a point. We should focus on Corypheus. But what if they're an even bigger threat? Like, what if they're in league with Corypheus? It's best to find out. Inquisitor. 
And lastly, Meet or Legion Mercenaries. Inquisitor. If you believe it would be helpful, I would be pleased to take the Bull's charges into Orlay to meet with mercenaries currently serving Orlesian nobles who wish to rebel. A well-placed word from one professional to another could pull the teeth from the enemy and bolster the Inquisition's ranks. Lieutenant Cremisius Aklazi. Uh, Colin was not participating. Liliana says a few drops of poison in the right wine glass and some of these mercenaries will be looking for a new employee. Let's not go straight to murder. Josephine, while the charges lean on the mercenaries, I can lean on the nobles. Between us, we can subvert any possible rebels. Yeah, let's let's be diplomatic. Inquisitor. There we go. Good stuff. Now, where do we want to start? We ha we have ten minutes, and plenty of people to talk to. I. <laughs> My, my gut says start with Varric, because, I mean, he is the one missing his friend, after all. Look, I, I have to check. Every time, I have to check. Oh, that's Lorinil! Oh my... Oh my god, has it happened? He spawned in somewhere else. Oh my god. Oh my... Well, that... I know what to do. We have to find him. We only have ten minutes left, so you know what? Va Varric can wait. Varric can wait. We have important business. And that is finding that guy. Oh. He sometimes spawns here. Now, um... Let's see. Let's see. Where are his usual hotspots? He'll sometimes spawn in... Not so sure you want them now. Let's just say I'm glad they're moving on. Mm. Okay, Maradon has a quest for us. All right. Um, I know he sometimes likes to spawn in down here, in this little nook. Sir? Okay, he's not here. Um, there's the stable. I know he often hangs out around there. Oh, I, d I can't remember where. Did you see what? Oh, oh god, god damn it! That could have been interesting. How dare! Much offence. But yeah, it, it's been a while since I looked up all his spawn locations, so I'm. Not now, sister. I know what you mean to do. It won't help. My father drowned there. Who are you to tell me what will make me feel better? I'll find him. I'll find the mayor, and I'll... I'll... Decide your actions before you go. In the moment, there's only before, and too late. Oh, the mayor of Crestwood. Yeah, this... This is... People were hurt by his actions. People were hurt. He couldn't just... He couldn't just get away scot-free. There had to be some consequences to his actions. Get up there. Get up there, lass. Lord Trifles? Lord Trifles Minutic? Where are you? Well, that's Master Dennett. Hmm. I don't... I don't trust this. I, I'm gonna go back and check, just in case. You know, maybe I missed him with my first sweep over. Because for the entire game, he's been spawning in in that one location. It's really weird, but... God damn, I did miss him. God, sir, you had... You fooled me. You fooled me, sir. I can't... God damn it. God damn it. I do... The disappointment. The disappointment I feel in my heart, it hurts... It hurts so badly. I... God damn. You know what, I, I only have five minutes left on my time. And we did pick up some codex entries. Because, of, you know, throughout the fade. So, we'll have a read of them. 
I'll see here. Grey Wardens declare support for Inquisition. Following the destruction of the Temple of Sacred Ashes and the opening of the Breach, all efforts to locate the Grey Wardens failed. Too many, the disappearance of this noble order was yet another ill omen. However, thanks to the efforts of the Inquisition, the Grey Wardens have returned. It appears they were gathered at the Fortress of Adamant in the Western Approach. According to Inquisition representatives, the Grey Wardens were focused on their own solutions to the crises facing Thedas. After convening Adamant, the Grey Wardens and Inquisition entered into an alliance, wherein the Grey Wardens will support the Inquisition in the war against Corypheus. Cryer Bellinus. Yeah, so we're... We kind of... We're, we're not telling Thedas what the Grey Wardens were actually up to. We're, we're lying to keep the peace. I mean... Again, in Ainor's mind, the, the Grey Wardens have done so much over the years. You know, this, this is one blip in her mind. No, no, we don't want inventory. We want... Codex. There we go. Alistair. A hero to the recent Fifth Blight. The Grey Warden Alistair is credited alongside the hero Ferelden with slaying the Archdemon and sparing Thedas the ravages of the Darkspawn. Rumour has it that he is the heir to the Freldon throne, but that he turned it down in deference to Queen Honora, daughter to the traitorous Tern Loghain. After the Champion of Kirkwall's sacrifice in the Fade, giving him and the Inquisitor a chance to escape, Alistair left to report to the Grey Warden leadership at the Fortress of Weishaupt in the Anderfells. And I believe the other one we should have... Really? Nothing on Hawk? Oh, this is because this is someone else writing about her. Yeah. Okay, I guess that was the only one. Creatures. Darkspawn. Oh, wait, hang on. I, I... Hmm. You'd assume... I think this is because we've researched them. Yeah, I must have read the Codex entries for Darkspawn and Dragon. I must have. Nightmare, this one is new. My friends, we accept as fact that more powerful and intelligent demons select more complex aspects of our reality to observe and interact with. A demon of pride may gravitate to the corrupt hubris of nobles, the bloodthirsty arrogance of soldiers, or sadly, the blind confidence of mages. A demon of desire may focus on lust, greed, or even the desperate wishes of those with no recourse in the waking world. Whether demons are naturally inclined to such specificality, or made so by observing a confluence of specific events in our world, is a subject of much debate, and not the question my experiment would answer. Instead, I turn to the question of fear. We think of fear demons as lesser creatures, Powerful, but simple, like those common beasts of rage or hunger. But fear has many faces, from the absurd phobias of the pampered nobility to the very real threats of magic, demons, dragons, and perhaps especially the Blight. What event has shaped the course of human history more than the Blight's? Had the first Blight not weakened it, the Tevinter Imperium would have crushed Andraste's rebellion. We would have no Ferelden no circles, and indeed, no chantry as we know it. The Blight is unequalled as a force of devastation and terror, hated and feared by peasant and king alike, from the northern hills of the Anderfels to the southern reaches of the Kakari wilds. I know of nothing else that inspires such universal and specific fear. Dragons and demons, yes, but both have found respect and fascination in cultures across Thedas. Only the Blight is an unadulterated source of horror. If there exists a demon of fear who has shaped itself into a more intelligent, more specific mould, it will be a demon focusing on fear of the blight. This is the experiment I undertake. By the time you read this, my friends, I will be asleep, travelling through the Fade to find such a creature. If I am correct, it will yield an unparalleled source of information on the history of our world. Wisdom hidden since the time of ancient Tevinta. I have instructed the scribes to write quickly upon my return. I will have much to impart. 
a letter found beside the sleeping body of senior enchanter Jessamere, her last known communication before her subsequent possession and then death, along with twelve mages, nine templars, and unaccounted apprentices and tranquil at the hands of Knight Captain Hulgar. Flippin' neck. And I don't know why she thought that this extremely powerful demon would want to speak to her and that it wouldn't just automatically possess her. It, it, you, you have to question some people. I mean, she did say the unadulterated confidence, or was it, no, the blind confidence of mages. Clearly, she had that hubris. Um, yeah, we've read this one. This is because we've researched it. Uh, anything else? No. And history. Here lies the abyss. Here lies the abyss, the well of all souls. From these emerald waters doth life begin anew. Come to me, child, and I shall embrace you. In my arms lies eternity. Canticle of Andraste, 1411. Chantry sisters have long debated this section of the Chant of Light. It is tempting to assume that the well of all souls is a literal well, but such imagery appears nowhere in Andraste's other works. An examination of Threnvi's 1-4 yields clues. From the waters of the Fade you made the world. As the Fade had been fluid, so was the world fixed. It is possible, even likely, that the emerald waters Andraste refers to are the substance of the Fade, which began as an ocean of dreams, Threnody's 1-1 and was reduced to a well, bottomless but limited in scope, by the maker's creation of our world. Is Andraste urging the listener to come to the Fade? Should we take from these emerald waters doth life begin anew as literal evidence of reincarnation, or even of life after death as the cult of spirits suggest, or as a figurative benediction indicating that the maker is the source of all life, and in finding his embrace for eternity, we will only be returning our souls from whence they came? An excerpt from Reflections on Divinity by Revered Mother Juliet. Lovely. Alrighty then. And I will bring this episode to a close here. In the next one, we speak with our companions. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.